Wales, Grand Slam was pretty close. France take it away, 32 points to 20. France is still alive. Potential first Six Nations title in over a decade for them. Crazy game. You got tries. Flurry of tries at the start. You got penalties. You got yellow cards. You got red card. You got heaps of TMO. Crazy, crazy game overall. I'll go over some of the key events of the game and you guys can let me know your thoughts on how things went. The refereeing stuff will be a huge talking point. Unavoidable in this game. Um, Luke Pierce and, and Wayne Barnes were pretty good with their communications with each other, but they certainly busted out a few cards towards the end of the game. Um, it started off with a bit of a high intensity start in this game. The opening stands ahead a bunch of phases from France, maybe set the benchmark for how things were going to go. Um, but they got held up early, did the French, and there were a few kind of held up moments in this game as well. It wasn't the only one by any means. And uh, they converted actually pretty early. Telfa Fanua just, I guess, capped off all that pressure that France had early on. And it's interesting because he was like a meter out and you might think that he would power over. But essentially he just picked up the ball and just put it about a meter forward. He's got really quick hands. So good try early from Telfa Fanua. No power, just reach. And uh, he goes up for the try. Um, it looks like Davis... Uh, has gone over as well at 1.4. It was Gareth Davis. I've only written Gareth Davis. It's so many crazy events in this game. I'm trying to rack my brain. Um, Oliver holds him up. He gets a hand under him. Uh, it was Lewis Rissama who passed the ball to, to Gareth Davis. It went close. So two held up moments early on in the game. And kind of like the French, immediately after being held up, they still go ahead and convert a try. It's uh, It's bigger who finally gets the try on 12 minutes. He hits the ball at absolute pace after they'd been going through the forwards. When they finally unleashed the backs, it was bigger. And uh, yeah, they had advantage anyway, so seven points apiece. Bang, bang, he got two tries. He got 14 points in less than 14 minutes, but it was not going to stop there. The craziness continued because Dulin had a chip over the top. There were two Welsh defenders in the backfield. And Dulan's chip was just like right between them. So they both had to kind of move back infield. Dulan was able to regather. He gets the ball to Jelly Bear. So there's two men. Uh, it's Jelly Bear and, um, and Dupont with only one Welsh defender on that side. All he's got to do is draw his man past the Dupont. Dupont goes over for a try in 14 minutes. It's absolute craziness. It seems so easy. It's 14-7. But before you've got time to breathe, Navidi gets a try. Wells go down the other end from the kickoff, 18 phases, and uh, from one meter out, he goes over for a try as well. 14 points apiece after 18 minutes, four tries. And it's not like the defense was poor. Like, Navidi's try was Wales really grinding them down. Uh, Tafa Fanua's try was likewise the opposite, true for France. Like, it took a lot of phases to grind the defense down. Um, proper bit of individual brilliance from Dulan to set the try up. Like, saw the defensive pattern and read it well. Uh, biggest try, likewise, with advantage. You might as well throw your hand, and they got a try. So, it wasn't kind of defense as optional stuff by any means. Um, 26 minutes, France kicked the ball dead. 29 minutes, Jolly Bear gets an accidental elbow um, from Jonathan Davis. So he has to go off. He doesn't come back on. Maybe they look a bit better with Intermark when he comes on. He's a pretty good replacement to have. Interestingly, around about half an hour, France win a scrum penalty, and their scrum probably does get a bit on top in this game. Um, but yeah, I think both sides kick penalties before before half time. So it finishes 17 17 at half time. You're no closer to knowing who's going to win it. But Wales have got more possession, more territory, like 63% or 65% at half time. Handling errors is 5 to 6, with Wales having one more, maybe more in the. The la like after the Navidi try, the game kind of settles down a wee bit. Um, both sides tackling pretty well, but France higher, 93% tackling percent at halftime. Pretty impressive stuff. Uh, second half, though, Wales start with a proper period of power. Unable to get a try, though, but they get a penalty to make it 20 points to 17. Um, Adams looks to have got a try on 50 minutes, and there's a very long checklist for Wayne Barnes to go through 
before they can award the try. But this one, I think, was probably an example of good refereeing. Because, essentially, after a bit of a soccer football kick-through regather moment, um, they have to check whether Thomas Williams has knocked it on. When they check it, he hasn't. They go to check Adams' grounding. Now, the referee makes an on-field call that it's a try, but he wants to check if there's any clear evidence to overturn it. And the evidence, I think, for me, on my little TV, is pretty inconclusive. It looks like the ball's probably down, but I think it's Critan has got his hand under the ball, at least part of the ball. So I genuinely feel like this one, if the ref says it's an on-field no try, there's probably not enough evidence to overturn, you would say he's held up. But because he gives it on-field try, you have to go benefit of the doubt. Maybe if you're Welsh, you go, you're mad, that was clearly grounded, get a bigger TV. Maybe if you're French, you go, you're mad, he was clearly held up, get a bigger TV. I thought it was fair. Fair call. Uh, 27 points to 17 with that try. France kick a penalty, though, not long later, make it 27-20, so it's still game on. Uh, Wales go for a maul after a line-out penalty. Alan Wynne-Jones shows some pretty slick handling to do a little chicken wing Offload to Reese Samet, who looks to have scored in the corner. But we go back to the TMO, who says he's grounded it on the corner flag. So it's touch and goal. So it's no try. But they go back for a penalty against Hawas for collapsing the mall. And uh, Wales have got the extra man. Wales kicked the penalty to make it 30 points to 20. So three points during the yellow card. Interestingly, though, from there, the yellow card period suddenly becomes France's time to dominate. They go down the other end. They themselves have plenty of chances to kick penalties, but they opt for none of them. They go close on 62. They get advantage. They opt for a lineout. They go for a mall. They get held up. The TMO checks it. On field, no try. Uh, so there's no try. Another advantage to France. They don't opt for three. They go for a scrum from five meters out. And then on 67 minutes, it looks like Doulan has finally broken the Welsh defence down, which has been under the pump. And credit to the French attack for doing this with a man down. Um, it was coming for ages. It looks like he's held up. But then before they even, like maybe held up, before they even go to look at the try, Wayne Barnes gets on the horn and says, maybe we need to check some foul play for like a neck roll. It's Willemse on Win jones Why always Win jones I don't know. Initially, the ref has a look at it on the screen and goes, okay, so that's a penalty. And Wayne goes, maybe it's around his eyes. We need to check it a bit closer. And then the ref goes, maybe it's a yellow. And then they have a look at another angle and they decide it's a red because he's, he's putting his fingers around his eyes. So yeah, 68 minutes, Paul Willemse gets red carded and people given Wales stick about all the red cards their opponents have been receiving would have been firing up their keyboards I'm sure to get ready to criticize that one and it's a hard one because I know anything around the eyes is just an absolute no-go but it's not like he was deliberately eye gouging him you could say the neck roll part was was um was not a good look the effect that his hand is around his eyes is incidental but again the way the game is refereed these days your intent doesn't really matter a damn if you do it that's that's what it is so it's kind of hard to defend a guy who gets his finger in somebody else's eye if you've seen the new zealand basketball league there was one incident where a guy had his eye poked out of his head and they had to pop it back in so it can happen in sports but anyway, Willems gets red carded. And it's suddenly looking like a very long way back for the French, but it's not game over. There's enough time. Um, France, despite having the man down, they essentially get their yellow card player back, but then their red card player's off, so it's 14 on 15. Olivon gets held up, Falatau gets yellow carded for offside, uh, and now it's suddenly 14 on 14. And then moments later, held up by uh, by Liam Williams, by the way, who was 
apart from getting the yellow card in a moment, pretty good. Um, France knock it on a meter out on 72 minutes, and you're thinking, how the heck did they not score? It looks like Camille Shah has maybe scored a try, but the TMO, um, the ref is like, I'm not looking at it. He tells Fiku, Fiku's like, I promise I saw it. The ref's telling him to bugger off. He's not going to look at it. But what he does do is he yellow cards Liam Williams for going in off his feet. And then he has a, a chat to the captains to tell them both to chill, otherwise more players are going to go. So suddenly, from being 15-14 up, Wales are 14-13 down in terms of players on the field. It's absolutely bananas. Two yellow cards in quick succession is pretty rare. Usually it's yellow card and then you get a warning. And then it's a warning or like a penalty. I don't know, you seem to get like a freebie. Two yellow cards in a row. I find a bit... It's a bit rare. Yeah. It happens. I've seen it happen before. But generally, you know the way it goes. You can see the penalty. You can see the penalty. Warning. Next one's a yellow. And then you kind of reset. I mean, if it's absolutely, clearly, stupidly cynical, which is maybe what he's saying the Liam Williams, ones, Liam Williams one was, then it's a straight yellow. But yeah, maybe, maybe it is. Either way, two yellow cards in very quick succession. And um, eventually, 76 minutes... Uh, France, or oh, 77 minutes. Olive One does get a try at last. Um, it was just a, a quick conversion that they took as well. Uh, 30 points to 27. And uh, on 78 minutes and a half, I think France copped the ball over, knocked the ball on. All Wales need to do is see out about a minute and a half. As our commentator on my one said, tuck the ball up the jumper and just run down the clock. But with about 30 seconds to go, France win a penalty at the breakdown, or Wales are, are pinged at the breakdown. So they get one last chance. And somehow, unbelievably, they take it through Doulan. It's almost like 83 minutes on the clock. They go through a huge number of phases. I mean, credit to the Welsh defence. Two men down against the team with one man down. They're knocking on the door. They're slowly retreating. They're being very careful not to concede any penalties. They're rolling away quickly to make sure they're not getting pinged at the breakdown. Um, but yeah, eventually the, the the space out wide, it matters because they got the extra man and Doulan goes over. It finishes 32-30. So from a last minute grand slam, you're 30 seconds away from it or 60 seconds away from it. Suddenly you're on the defense and then France score. It's a bonus point try for them. And their Six Nations campaign is still alive. What a mad game. It's disappointing the refs were obviously so involved, but that is what it is. Um, so France need to beat Scotland with a bonus point and I think have a points difference of 21 or more. So it's not going to be easy. I still don't know the result of Scotland against Italy. I'm going to go watch that in a minute. But man... What a bit of madness. This Six Nations has been mad, honestly. It's been mad. Um, possession finishes 50-50. Territory 48-52. Uh, handling errors 12 to France, 7 to Wales. Line break 6 to France, 5 to Wales. Tackling percentage France 94%. That's class. Sean Edwards will be mostly happy. Don't know if I've seen him smile. 84% uh, for Wales, which is still pretty respectable. They have to make more tackles, though. They're attempting 200 plus, whereas Wales, um, it's France is in the 180s. Um, scrum penalties conceded as two zip, so maybe that's a little bit of an area of concern. Penalties conceded overall is 14-6, uh, with Wales conceding 14, including four for being offside. So, a bit concerning. Dulong gets man of the match. He has a try, a bunch of kick meters, 138 run meters, 12 carries, very involved. Alan Wynne Jones tries to carry his team through it with 22 tackles, but not to be. Their fate is no longer in their own hands. Next week, Friday, France will take on Scotland, and we will see what happens with the Six Nations. Absolute madness. Don't know, man. It's absolute madness. Red cards, yellow cards. Held up, TMO. It's not what you want to see in terms of the involvements, but it's still a very entertaining game of rugby. That first half, especially the first 20 minutes, was phenomenal. Some of the best rugby you've ever seen. 
Go back and watch it if you haven't seen it. Certainly some entertainment. I'll be interested to go back. I'll have to watch it again and see the Liam Williams yellow card to see if it was that egregious. And um, yeah, we'll see how things go next week. It should be pretty fun watching. You guys let me know your thoughts on this one. Congratulations, France. You're still in the hunt. Wales are still in the driver's seat, but it's not in their own hands. They need Scotland to do them a big old favor. I know Welsh fans will be pretty despondent after a Grand Slam being that close. They couldn't hold it out. But anyway, French um, willpower to stay in that game is very, very commendable. Anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts. Controversial refereeing decisions. Great tries. Great moments. Who was your player of the match? And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. See you later.